Today, we will learn about binary search, a searching algorithm that is commonly used in a wide variety of applications. Imagine you had a row of boxes that are sealed and each box has a number inside. You don't know what number is inside each box. Naturally, we will want to open each box one by one until we either find our number or realize that none of the boxes contains our number. Now, imagine if our boxes were sorted in an increasing order based on the number inside, and we want to find that same number. Surely, we can open each box one by one again, but it will take the same amount of time as before. Can we do better? What if we just start by opening a random box? If the number inside the box happens to be the number we're looking for, then great, we're done. If that number is greater than the number that we're looking for, we will randomly pick another box from its left side. And if that number is less than the number that we're looking for, we will randomly pick another box from its right side. This idea has some merits, but it's mostly based on luck. If we're unlucky enough, we might end up opening every box. Can we do better? The answer is yes, we can. Let's talk about binary search. To start, let's turn our boxes with numbers into an array of numbers. The concept behind binary search is really simple. It is a divide and conquer algorithm where at each step of the way, we divide our search range by a half. This definition is the perfect setup for recursion. So binary search can be implemented both iteratively and recursively. To achieve this, we start by searching at the middle of the array. If the array length is even, there are two middle elements. In that case, we can pick either the left or the right element. Conventionally, people usually take the left, but either choice should work as long as your algorithm accounts for it by consistently picking the same side. If the middle element matches our target, we're done. If the middle element is greater than our target, that means the target is somewhere in the left region from the middle element. If the middle element is less than our target, that means the target is somewhere in the right region from the middle element. We repeat this procedure until we either find our target or we have searched the entire array. Let's visualize this. Given the following array, we want to search for 80 as our target and return its index. If 80 doesn't exist in the array, we will return negative one. Initially, our search range is the entire array. We use low and high to represent the start and the end of our search range. So in this case, low it starts at zero and high is the length of the array minus one. Inside the loop, we begin calculating our middle index, which is five. Notice how we are calculating it. Usually, we can just calculate it by summing low and high and then divide it by two. However, this doesn't account for the possibility of a phenomenon called stack overflow. I'll leave a link in the description for those who are interested. Basically, it means that low and high are really large numbers and adding them together exceeds the maximum integer value which is two to the 31 minus one, causing the overflow. Okay, now we can move on. So since array five is 60, which is below our target, we will move our search range to the right side by setting low to mid plus one, which is six. On the second iteration, since low is still less than high, we proceed to calculate mid, which is eight. Since array eight is 90, which is above our target, we will move our search range to the left side by setting high to mid minus one, which is seven. On this third iteration, low is still less than high, so we proceed to calculate mid, which is six. Since array six is 70, which is below our target, we will move our search range to the right side by setting low to mid plus one, which is seven. On the fourth iteration, low is still less than high, so we proceed to calculate mid, which is seven. Since array seven is 80, which is the target that we're looking for, we return the index, which is seven, and our binary search is completed. If we were to compare this with the linear search approach, the binary search only took us four iterations, 
whereas the linear search would have taken us eight iterations. In terms of big O complexity, binary search is big O of log n, making it a logarithmic algorithm. The application of binary search is not only limited to just numbers. Consider the case where there is a regression in production code, but there are a thousand commits between the last known good version and the latest version. Instead of potentially searching a thousand times, you are guaranteed to find the bad commit within 10 searches by using binary search. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.